All right. Well, hi, welcome to Wine Down Wednesday. It's Dr. Weiss coming to you from Paradise Med Spa here with Janet, um, our um, patient care coordinator and office manager and my sidekick for mm -hmm. Wine Down Wednesday, <laughs> <laughs> our sommelier. Cheers. So, yeah, cheers. So happy November, happy Thanksgiving, and happy Veterans Day. Today we're, we're pre-taping this, so today is actually Veterans Day. So thank you to all of those who have served, including my husband. Um, whoop, whoop. Yeah, whoop, whoop. And I'm sure he wishes we were doing something other to celebrate other than me doing Wine Down Wednesday at work, but that's just how it goes. Right. Yeah. And we're um, drinking one of his favorite wines, but we're honoring him. That's right. I took it from the house and Janet will tell you all about it, but I took it from the house and it is my husband's favorite wine. So in his honor for Veterans Day, we are drinking uh, the sextant passages. So Janet, tell us what we're drinking and why. Like, what, All right, but I really about? wanna make sure everybody can get a great glimpse of this bottle because I think it's really cool. Super, super beautiful artwork here. It is a 2016 and it's from the sextant wines, but it's from the founders collection. And it's a 2016, as you said, which is a full body red blend. Um, it has flavors of like strawberries, cranberries, kirsch, even though I don't know what kirsch is. Do you know what kirsch is? If you know what kirsch is, type it in because we Yeah. Um, also mesquite and rosemary. I really like it because it's super smooth, but it's not super heavy. Uh -huh. Like, you know, some of your cabs or even some of your red blends. I mean, they can be kind of heavy, but this one isn't. I really, really like it. It could yeah, go good it, with a variety of dishes. Yeah, it's very flavorful, flavorful, and um, you know, I like a Pinot Noir, but mm -hmm. I really like this one. It's not so heavy, like a deep cab or something, but it's somewhere in between. Um, we like it with steak or just drinking. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it would go good with pasta too if you're mm -hmm. having like a like a penny alla vodka. Yeah. It's delicious. I mean, honestly, I feel like it's paired well with anything we've ever put it with. Um, yeah. My husband does his military training out in Paso Robles, and we happened upon this vineyard out there and love it. It's a really beautiful vineyard, um, kind of close to the tooth and nail vineyard that we talked about the last time. So, tell us about love our specials it. for November, Janet. So, November, we have some great specials, and I'm sure everybody knows they'll have something to do with the neck, or at least some of them will anyway. Turkey neck? Yeah, turkey neck. So, save the turkey neck for someone else. We have save $100 off two or more syringes of Voluma. And you might be saying, well, what does that have to do with the neck? Well, Voluma um, or Allergan, the makers of Voluma, have the indication now to treat the chin and the neckline. So um, in a little bit, Dr. Weiss is gonna share some really cool photos uh, of some work that she's done there on some of our staff members. But $100 off two or more syringes of Voluma. And then we have um, the VI peel, which is not just for the face, but we can take it down the neck. Um, buy two VI peels, get the third one free. Um, so that's a $335 value. And VI peels anyway are recommended that you do them in a series of three to get the optimal results. One of my favorite, favorite treatments. Um, and it's also great to prep your skin for the CO2, especially if you have a lot of pigment um, or if you have a lot of skin buildup. I think it's great for that. But it's the turkey skin and the turkey neck. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next best thing is 20% off Elastin Restorative Neck Complex. Um, that is one of our favorite neck products designed specifically for the neck, that turkey neck, and the decollete area. 20% um, off this month only while supplies last. And then the last one is save $50 on weight loss because a lot of us have put on a little extra pounds during this COVID pandemic and we're all looking forward to Turkey Day. So you can save $50 off a weight loss consultation with either Elfie or Dr. Turcott, um, who many of you know joined our wellness team last year and we're just enjoying having her on our team. So if someone, for example, wanted to start their diet after Thanksgiving, could they come in now and get the 50% off and then start their diet after Thanksgiving? 
Yeah, it's $50 off. So the main okay. thing is they want to call during the month of November. Okay. You know, ideally we get them in the month of November, but you know, we're almost halfway through there. That's crazy. Um, it's already the 11, yeah. 11. Yes. Yep. And then, um, you know, Monday, November 30th is the last day in November. So someone could technically call on that day and say, Hey, I want to get on that weight loss okay. you know, deal. Cause I have a feeling um, most people are going to be it. starting their diet after this. Yeah, I do too. Um, and this way we can kind of get them, you know, set up and, and in the right frame of mind. So after Thanksgiving, they know what they're doing and how they're going to do it. Great. So um, I also wanted to introduce a new product that we are carrying in Paradise, the Helio Hair mm -hmm. Ultra. Mm -hmm. This is a supplement. So this is a skincare product, but it's actually a supplement. So it's an oral supplement that you take that has something called Fern Block in it, which is a high potency antioxidant. And this product um, has been shown to decrease uh, risk of skin cancers. I also recommend something called niacinamide, which is another supplement that you can take if you have a history of, of precancerous lesions or cancers, skin cancers, I recommend niacinamide. But this is also a great pairing with that. And um, so anyone who has who's had prior skin cancers or who has a family history of skin cancer, this is a great supplement to take and it can help as an anti-aging supplement as well. Um, I have been taking it for my melasma and have seen uh, really a lot of improvement in the brown pigmentation on my skin. Um, and I've heard uh, at some local conferences that I've attended um, other docs, one in particular, a, um, a very renowned uh, cosmetic dermatologist named Dr. Doris Day. Um, she recommends this highly and that's what got me looking at it. Um, and it's one pill once a day when you take the physician formula that we carry. So yeah. it's super easy. Good point, Dr. Weiss, because that um, you can get HelioCare. Um, you, you know, you'll see it, you know, perhaps online on Amazon. A lot of us spend time on Amazon, but the Ultra is only available through physician offices. Yeah. So you can and only that find you this at their offices today. and yeah. offices. So yeah. highly recommend it. One thing I noticed is that when I was taking it at night, it must be like somehow gets your brain active because I would have crazy dreams. So mm -hmm. I recommend taking it in the morning and not at night, unless you, I don't know, want to be entertained all night long. <laughs> it didn't stop me from sleeping. It just, I woke up thinking like, wow, that was weird. Um, but anyway, so if you can remember to take a pill in the morning, I would suggest that. Um, not to mention then you have your antioxidant working for you during the day when you're out amongst the pollutants and um, in the UV rays and all of that. So it's probably better to take it in the morning anyway. Yeah. And you can, I was reading Dr. Weiss, that you can take a second dose. Let's say someone knows that they're going to be out. Well, right now we're not doing festivals or anything like that. But let's say you're going to be out on Lake Pleasant all day, mm -hmm. right? You might take it in the morning like you usually do. And then, you know, four hours later, you can take another one for that additional Added protection. protection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, think of it like an internal sunscreen. That's really what it's meant to be. Yeah, um, so and not in lieu of. Yeah, right. No, not in lieu of. You definitely need to be putting on your sunscreen and reapplying your sunscreen um, like you should, but this is sort of an added layer of protection. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been putting all my melasma patients on it. So great. Um, so that's a little tidbit. So let's go back to the, um, the, the question about the neck and the Voluma. Um, so Voluma did just get its FDA approval for use in the chin and the neck. Um, well, not so much the neck, but sort of the jawline area. And that's opened up. It's not that we haven't, we do a lot of things off label and we've been using it there. But what's great about having it now on label is that the manufacturers of these products can send out their clinical training teams. They can talk about it, best practices. Um, so it, it's a way for all of us to get better at using these products in these, in these new areas of indication. Um, and we've been playing around with it quite a bit, really loving it. Um, and Voluma is, is, there's different ways that, that these products are made. And Voluma is a higher G 
prime, which is the way that we grade these gel fillers, meaning that it's a firmer gel. It has a, it's G prime is its ability to lift tissue. So it's a great product. Um, it originally got its indication for the cheeks um, because of that, that property to the gel, but it's also a great um, product for the jawline and the chin, like right along the bone, because we tend to lose not just fat, but also bone as we age. So um, we, we tend to age, we, we lose our volume, we age sort of down and forward, and that's how we get these jowls. And then when you lose the bony scaffolding along the jawline, that just accentuates the whole process. Um, so anyway, we've been loving it and have had some amazing results. I wanted to try to do a screen share with all of you so I can show you the results that we got on my medical assistant, Chrissy, but also um, on Elfie, who's one of the um, wellness um, team members who let me practice on her face <laughs> last <laughs> week. So with, um, let me pull up her pictures first. So with Elfie, she's a little older than my medical assistant, Chrissy. Can you see that, Janet? Yep, I right. sure can. So with Elfie, you can see that she had a fair amount of jowling, loss of volume. She's had some weight fluctuation throughout her life. Um, but you can see she's lost volume around her perioral area. She's got fairly prominent pre-jowl sulci here, which is the little sort of dip that happens in front of the jowl and behind the jowl. Um, and we put her filler, we used Voluma, um, and we also used some Velour and Vobella around her mouth and nasolabial folds. In total, we used 15 syringes of filler, which sounds like a lot, but I'm going to show you guys in a minute here how much a syringe of filler actually is. It really equates to a quarter of a teaspoon of product, so it's really not as much as you think. Um, but we used Voluma in her cheek area here to lift back um, and to fill in this groove that you can see she's got here, which really helps for underneath her eyes. You can see in her after picture that her under eye area looks quite a bit better. Um, you really need to lift the cheeks before and make sure that they're adequately treated before you can attack the jowls themselves. Um, so then after we treated her cheek, we went in and we put some along her posterior jawline, which you can see here, and in her chin to give her more anterior projection to her chin and elongate her chin just a little bit because she tends to pull in, which is accentuating these lines. But you can see how much better that line is there, um, how much better the jowls look by lifting everything and pulling things back and we gave her a little bit of lift, and then we did a little refinement in her nasolabial fold. And this was immediately after, same day. So That's amazing. Yep, and you can see she really doesn't have a whole lot of bruising. I mean, yeah, there's some evidence of injection, but we used a lot of cannulas, and, and she really, other than a little bruise in her lip the next day, she did not bruise at all. And she looks very natural. So this is, again, 15 syringes of filler. You think, oh, you know, she's not going to look natural, and she does. Um, this is her... Um, other picture, you see that, Janet, or no? Yeah, I, perfect. Okay. Yep, that looks great. So, um, so this is her before, and this is her after, and there's no Botox. She does need a little bit of Botox in her midbrow. Um, she's got a little hooding here, um, and that will help to lift her brows. But we we lifted back her her cheeks, and she's got really nice cheekbone structure to begin with but we really needed to pull this tissue that's falling forward here, we needed to pull that backward. Um, and then again, sort of give her more of a, um, a better jawline and perioral region. And she looks amazing. Yeah. Dr. Weiss, I noticed in this one too, you can really see how the shape also of her face has changed. Mm -hmm. So instead yep. of looking more rectangular, it looks more you know, like a little wider at the top, narrower at the bottom. More oval, like oval, more oval. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, so this I would consider a liquid facelift, and Janet and I will talk to you uh, momentarily kind of about how we're going to be pricing that out at our office. Um, because again, we understand not everyone can come in here and, and, and pay for 15 syringes of filler. You know, most people when they come in for a filler appointment are thinking, oh, you know, a couple syringes, you know, three maybe tops. But this is this is more of something we're gonna need to plan for 
um, strategize with our patients, have them come in for a consultation and really sit down and determine how much filler we need, where we're going to be putting it and, um, and really block out an appropriate amount of time for that. So we're not rushed. This took me three hours. I mean, this was not, this was, a, this was a big project. <laughs> so. Right. And considering you're an expert injector, I mean, I think that says a lot, Yeah. you know, mm -hmm. that it just takes that kind of time, you mm -hmm. know, because it's the, uh, using the right tool. It's, you know, your eye, that artistic talent. Yeah. So, you know, especially when you're using cannulas, it just takes a little bit longer. It's a safer way to do it. And, and again, less bruising and swelling, as you can see immediately after she looks great, but it just takes a little bit more time than injecting with needles and going straight, straight for the problem. And that's another thing to talk about is that, you know, I think historically when someone would come in with sort of saggy cheeks, we would go right at the issue into the cheek, into the area where it looks like the deficit is. But I think you're gonna be able to achieve a much better result when you put the filler more laterally to lift first. So, and that's why it takes a fair amount of product because you're not just injecting into this cheek sulcus, for example. You're, you're injecting laterally to lift the tissue first and reposition the tissue. And you and I were talking about use of PDO threads for that as well, um, which we'll talk about today too. Um, but you know, I think when you when you have a patient who needs volume, you should really be replacing that first because you may be able to reposition the tissue with your filler, and then you won't need as many threads or need threads at all, depending on the area of concern. Yeah. So um, okay. So, and then I wanted to show you one more picture where we just treated my medical assistant, Chrissy. We treated her chin area. Um, so hopefully this shows up. Do you see that? Yep, perfect. Um, so you can see with Chrissy, we really just focused on her chin area, which is where the, the new indicated area for Voluma is. And you can see how much better she looks in her after. And this was the next day. So right. again, no evidence that she's done anything. She felt a little swollen, but I think she looks great. So absolutely, yep. And you can see it really helped her marionette. It gave her some anterior projection to her to her skin, uh, her chin. Um, I also find that it does a nice job of helping for the skin, the skin laxity on the neck when you give someone who has more of a recessed chin, when you give them that anterior projection and elongation to the chin. It does a nice job to help tighten the, the neck skin right underneath. Yeah, you can definitely see that in the before mm -hmm. and after. Yep. So beautiful results mm -hmm. for Chrissy. Um, and normally her husband is like super like conscious about when she does things and he thought she looked great. And this is just a close up of her chin. It's a little blurrier, so I like the other one better, but yeah, um, but you get the idea. And yeah, nice and soft looking, very mm -hmm. natural. Yep. So, so we're going to be doing more of these liquid facelifts here at the office. Um, I think because we're really able to achieve amazing results in it. I showed the pictures of the staff, but I've actually treated several patients and, um, and patients are seeing amazing results. So, uh, you know, it's something where we, um, well, maybe Janet, I'll have you explain how we'll be pricing that in the practice to make yeah. that a little more palatable for patients. Okay, sure. So um, as you mentioned, um, what we're gonna do is start out with a consultation. So for the person that thinks they might be a good candidate for it or is interested in, interested in having one, we would have Dr. Weiss assess you uh, in a consultation so that way we can determine you know, how much would be needed. And you know that'll be an estimate, but we're, I think we're pretty good at, at dialing it in and being upfront with patients about you know, the range there. Um, the next thing that would happen is um, I would prepare a price quote. And basically the formulation that I use is, you know, I would start out with a base, um, a base uh, amount of $1,000. And that's for a three hour visit right? That's for the work to be done. And then most people know that, you know, fillers cost, you know, quite a bit, but I can get that price down to about $500 a syringe. And, and on average, people need 
um, 10 syringes to do a liquid facelift. So some people might need a tiny bit less. Some people may, you know, need more like 12, 14, 15 syringes. So you're looking at, you know, general ballpark is about $6,000, give or take. Yeah. Um, but the nice thing is, is that people going into this would have an idea. They're not going to show up that day and all of a sudden be surprised. Mm -hmm. You know, the other thing that I do, um, for those of you that have worked with me when I set up procedures that require a lot of the doctor's time is I do accept a deposit in advance. I'll be ordering the product specifically for you. Um, so that we have it on hand that day since we're using, you know, a lot. Um, that's to be anticipated. So there really um, isn't much of any surprise at all, uh -huh. you know, when that day comes. It's pretty much paid for. Um, and then, um, you know, there might be, you know. And taking the deposit, I think, helps to split up the price. We also yeah. take care credit. So for those of you who don't know about care credit, that's a third party line of credit you can apply for. And we take the six month no interest plan. So that yeah. helps. Um, yeah, I mean, like we're talking about, it, it sounds like a lot of product, um, but it really isn't. So I wanted to do this little demonstration for you. So I've got a syringe of filler that that um, was ready to expire. So we figured we would um, donate it to the cause today and show you um, really how much, this is a one ml syringe of filler, how much on a teaspoon, how much this product really is. So again, one ml syringe this is what people typically consider as a syringe. And Can you hold it a little yep. higher? That was perfect. So I'm gonna in, put the whole thing here. That's it. Yeah. That's it. And then can you show Dr. Weiss um, with your finger maybe how what, thin it is too? It's not So what thick, this, this particular thin. product, and, and these are, this is the different gel consistencies that we were talking about. Um, this is Bellatero. So this one is a more like fine tuning type filler. This one would have a lower G prime than say something like the Voluma, which holds its shape a little bit better. Um, and there are newer flexible fillers on the market where this one um, I meets mean, a little bit flexible. I still have a little bit on my finger here, but it's, it's pretty um, soft. This is a nice soft gel, but it's really not a lot of products. You can see, I mean, to get that work done, why you might need 10 syringes of filler, 15 syringes of filler. It's not that much, especially when you're talking about treating two cheeks, the two sides of your face on your chin, treating your lips, treating nasolabial folds. I mean, it's a lot of areas to cover. Right. Um, some people might need their temples treated. You know, the so, other thing twice I think that's worth mentioning is the fact that when we are able to achieve full correction for a patient, you know, um, with filler, you get more longevity out of it, mm -hmm. right? So and Aluma has that two-year indication where, you know, when you do one or two syringes, I don't think it lasts between you and me. I don't think it lasts two years. I think it might last a year, just like all the rest of the fillers. Um, their clinical indication for two years came after their clinical study showing an average of four syringes per cheek, some, some more. So I think, um, that's how they got their longevity. And they did a touch up, you know, at right, nine halfway. months to top it off again before they really got to the two year mark. So, um, so is it gonna last two years? Um, probably not. I usually tell people to come back, you know, with, with the liquid facelift like we're talking about, probably come back in a year and let us top it off. So you're not waiting for it to all go away and then starting back from scratch and from ground zero. I think you're better off maintaining it. And that's what you want anyway. You don't want to go back to your pre-existing condition, right? You want to go, you want to maintain it um, so that you continue to look your best. Uh, so, so one year um, for, for, you know, less, when, when we're just doing, when someone comes in, just say like, we just put a little in their nasal labial fold. I usually say come back at six months, you know, so, um, and especially when we're not using Voluma, we're using some other products that may not last as long. Most, most gel fillers, hyaluronic gel fillers last about a year. So six months in, half of it's gone, come back for your, for your topper at that point. Yeah, that way you keep looking great all the time yeah. and everybody doesn't know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And most people who are doing filler are also doing Botox, right? So they're doing their neuromodulator treatments and those only last three to four months. So, mm -hmm. you know, 
I'll be seeing them anyway, and we can top off their filler when they come in for one of those neuromodulator treatments. Yeah. Um, yeah you know, the other thing really interesting, going back to the chin, is that there's something called myomodulation, which is where when you treat the, the chin area, and I'll try to pull up Elfie's pictures for that too, but it can affect how you look when you're making certain facial expressions. So we sometimes will treat off-label, but we will treat the mentalis muscle with Botox here because people tend to pull in and get dimply chins and it creates more of that marionette line and accentuates the jowls when you have a very strong mentalis muscle. But when you put filler here, it actually makes it harder for that muscle to contract as strongly. Um, so you look better when you're making facial expressions. So you don't look more fake. You actually look less, I don't know, I don't want to say animated. It's not so much that, but you're not pulling in and getting like those wrinkles that you were creating previously. And that's without Botox, just by use of filler in the chin. Yeah, I noticed that start happening to me after I turned 40, mm -hmm. you know, getting that orange peel look in my chin mm -hmm. with certain facial expressions. Yeah, I'm going to see, tell me, do I go away when I do this? Do you still see me? I still see you. <laughs> That's good. Okay, mm -hmm. let's see. I'm going to see if I can pull up Elfie's pictures of her smiling. Um, bear with me here. Um, okay. Oh, I was hoping I could pull those up, but anyway, maybe I'll post those on our Facebook page. I don't want to spend too much time on that. Um, that would be great. But there's some really good pictures of her animating, of her making a kissy face, and you can see how before her treatment, she's really pulling in and she gets these wrinkles down here. And then after the filler, she doesn't get, it's nice and smooth. Yeah. Um, so, and you know, we've been very busy here in Paradise because I think people are watching themselves on Zoom, like we are, right? right. And <laughs> they see what they look like in animation where normally when you're looking at the mirror, you're not talking to anyone. So you don't really see how you look when you're, when you're talking and how you're making, how you look when you make certain facial expressions. Um, where now people are really seeing that. So we're going through a ton of Botox and other neuromodulators um, and, and, and filler because I think people are really seeing what they look like um, on their profile when they're talking. Um, so that's been good for business. So COVID, thanks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one good thing that came out of it. <laughs> and they don't feel afraid of getting their lips done or anything because they can wear a mask and hide any right. evidence, you know, so. <laughs> I'm enjoying this wine. It's delicious. I, I am too. Um, okay, so we had spoken uh, briefly about PDO threads. So PDO threads are also gaining in popularity. PDO um, is a substance actually made derived from sugar substance, but it's what they make um, absorbable suture from. So what we use in the operating room. Um, and and this started in Asia, became very popular, and has since traveled, just like COVID, over to America. Um, <laughs> it eventually catches up to us. Um, so the world is a very small place. Um, but we actually realized they were onto something. So because these threads work great. And, and the young people, I think there's a lot of videos online, Instagram and TikTok, where people are getting using PDO threads to get this cat eye look. Um, but we've been using threads in our practice now for several years and, and mostly using it for lower face, you know, repositioning of lax skin. But like we spoke about, um, you know, I think if someone has a, a, when I see someone in consultation who has significant amount of volume loss, my, my first thought is let's restore that volume before we reposition the tissue. And some people might do it differently, but, you know, I think you might be able to get away without the threads if you are able to um, reposition things with, with, by adding the volume. Um, but I wanted to show folks these PDO threads because I will say there's a high degree of satisfaction with PDO threads. Patients mm -hmm. love them, there's really minimal downtime and it does give you a nice lift. So if you've, if you've done filler and you feel like I just still have this little bit 
of laxity that's bothering me, then I think that's the perfect candidate for someone uh, to consider PDO threats. So I've got a thread here um, and hopefully I'm gonna try to get it so you can see it. So this is a lifting thread and it's, I pulled it out of the cannula. They're already preloaded on these cannulas. I pulled it out so they don't normally look like they're sticking out like that. Um, they're nicely sort of tucked in like this. Um, they have this little white hub and they're tucked in nicely kind of like that, if you can see that. And then we insert that under the skin and then we pull the cannula out and it leaves that thread in place. But again, um, I'm gonna try my best to get this. Yeah, it's hard to get in. Yeah, it's hard to get it just right. It almost you reminds can, me of dental floss. Yeah, but you can almost see those little cogs on there. Do you see that? Like the little, they call mm -hmm. them barbs. I, I think of them like little fly legs. You know how fly legs have the little, do you see that? These, yep. Yeah, that's So that's perfect. what allows it to adhere underneath in the dermis. Um, and threads are made different ways. Sometimes the barbs go all in one direction. Sometimes they're bi-directional. Sometimes they're a combination. Um, this one is a bi-directional barb. Um, and that allows you to get a nice lift for repositioning. Um, and then there are some newer ones out there that, that affix, once you've put the, you reposition the tissue there, you can use a different type of thread with a different type of barb that sort of affixes the tissue where you've repositioned it. Um, so results with PDO thread lifts typically last about a year, sometimes a little bit longer, but I find that most of my thread patients come back a year later and they're ready to do it again. The beauty of these threads is that the, they're very low risk. Um, they, those threads will dissolve over the course of about six months. And, um, and in the meanwhile, you're developing, it acts as a stimulus for collagen. So you're developing your own collagen around it. So even though the thread itself might be gone after six months, the effect does last longer than that. Um, and they do have smooth threads that don't have those little barbs on them that you can use in areas where you might have like little bits of smile lines here where you don't necessarily want to add volume. Um, and you can almost make like a hashtag pattern with those smooth threads, again, to act as a stimulus for collagen. It's a nice combination, the two. Yeah, and yes, and you can use them together. And I've even used the smooth threads sort of posteriorly here, again, to help tighten back without using the lifting threads and had, had a nice result with that. You can even use the smooth threads or they make ones that have almost a twist to them in the vermilion border in the in the lip to give someone just a little bit of a lip flip. So yeah, like I said, sweet. the most popular thing I'm seeing right now is people wanting that cat eye. And that's where you go in either one or two spots on the brow. And then the thread comes up and comes out. Actually, it doesn't actually come out of your skin, but it sort of is inherent adherent more to the temporalis, the fascia up here underneath the skin. Um, to give you a little bit of a brow lift. Nice. Right up at that end. Supermodel look. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> so, but all the kids are liking that. It's kind of, they want to get their lips done and their cat eye. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So hopefully um, if anyone has questions, you're asking it. Um, this is a pre-recorded session that's going to be um, put on Facebook next week, but I will be tuning in to answer any questions. So if you have questions about PDO, threads. If you have questions about liquid facelifts, about Voluma, about any of the fillers that we use, um, do chime in and I'll be sure to answer them. Yeah. And people can always call me too. Mm -hmm. I love yep. getting calls. Janet's so. always available and, yep. um, and able to answer any questions. She's, she's been here with me since the beginning. So pretty much if she can't answer it, she'll come get me, but it's pretty rare. All right, um, what, am I, what are we doing next month? So next month, we have um, our friends here from um, Apex Medical. Yeah, right. for Renuvion J Plasma. We'll have Meg Mesher visiting with us. So that'll be exciting. You know, what we might want to do is compare and contrast Renuvion to Plasma Pet. Oh, there you go. That would be So we can do a, maybe a little demonstration of that next time. Okay. Okay, so stay tuned for that. That'll be this. It's always typically it's the second Wednesday of every month um, at 4 p.m. 
this month because we had a little scheduling change um, and we couldn't pre-record until today. Um, the, the show will air next week, but, but do stay tuned most of the time. And if we change it, we'll, we'll announce it. Um, but the second Wednesday of each month at 4 p.m. on Facebook. Yeah. And hopefully in 2021, we'll be able to go live again. I know, I miss being live. I know, it was more fun, but <laughs> and more fun to have pe patients be able to chime in, you know, in real time. But yeah, um, we miss all of you and thank you for supporting us through uh, the global pandemic. Um, and hopefully everyone is staying healthy and we'll have a happy Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks for joining us. Okay, bye. Bye.